first impression of Sheldon was beast. The first impression of him, he looked like a good athlete. He just was really well mannered, shook my hand, you know, nice to meet you, sir. Well, Sheldon's the kind of guy, he always looks like he's in shape. Then why is this verse coming six times rehearsed? Don't freestyle much, but I write him like such words. He just had a lot of obstacles to overcome before he could even step foot on his campus. It was, uh, quite a bit of risk involved in, 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 in signing Sheldon to a scholarship. I thought that it would be kind of tough for him this year to balance everything. He wasn't even getting off the bench. With Chris Temple's injury, it forced Sheldon into the starting lineup. We threw him in the fire. Just opened it and then he just exploded. But that's what makes his story even better, I think, is that um, the odds tell you he's not supposed to make it. And, and he's making it. This is his life. This is his story. This is Sheldon Edwards. Races got a plan with the population. Nothing to lose, everything's approved. People use even murders as skills. White men in suits don't have to jump. We're on campus at Barry University in Miami Shore, just north of Miami. And tonight, the Sunshine State Conference will crown its men's basketball champion, Eckerd College. The Tritons trying for a second straight crown. But standing in their way from Boca Raton, the Fighting Knights of Lynn University. Sheldon Edwards there, as you can see, jumping center. Initiating today, we're ready to go. Eckerd red, Lynn white, Lynn controls the tap. We approach 12 minutes left in this first half. A bit of a sloppy pass, and Lynn will make a bang. Edwards, back to flush. Oh. We talked a bit already about the Sheldon Edwards story. Reaching the NCAA Division II Conference Championship game was a culmination of a lifelong dream for Sheldon Edwards. But reaching this game, or even attending Lynn University at all, was quite a journey. After moving from Jamaica to New York, Sheldon lived with his parents and 11 siblings in an apartment in the Bronx. Sheldon was enrolled at Evander Childs High School in September of 1992, which is when he first discovered the game of basketball. As a junior, he made the varsity team. It was my first year playing organized ball. I didn't, you know, I was just learning, you know, so I didn't, you know, I don't remember exact numbers or anything like that, but I didn't, you know, I didn't do it too well. That would be Sheldon's only season of high school basketball. His senior year, he dropped out of school and began working at McDonald's for the next five months. I mean, not being in school and, you know, working at McDonald's uh, is just not something that I wanted to do. And I knew I needed to get a change. You know, it's a different environment. That change would be moving to Florida in 1996 to live with his sister. Sheldon went back to working at McDonald's and briefly at the post office before going to work at a variety of nursing homes. During this time, he received his GED, married his first wife, Letitia Gryan, and continued to work on his game. Yeah, I, just, I was just playing, just playing pickup, but I, I never lost sight of wanting to, you know, play college ball. In April of 2001, while playing in a tournament in Fort Pierce, Sheldon met the man who would help him reach his dreams. Mark Haddon saw his potential and persuaded the coach from St. John's River Community College to come watch him play. He was, the coach was impressed, so you know, that's how I ended up, I ended up signing with them. St. John's River is located in a little known town of Palatka, Florida. It was there that Sheldon's basketball dreams became a reality. A two-year starter for the Vikings, Sheldon averaged 16 points and almost 13 rebounds per game. He was named to the All-Mid-Florida JUCO Athletic Association All-Freshman Team. As a sophomore, Sheldon was ranked among the nation's top five in rebounding and was named to the All-Conference First Team. After 
his successful junior college career, several schools were knocking on his door. Kennesaw State was ready to sign Sheldon to a scholarship, but unfortunately things weren't going as well at home. A pending divorce led to Kennesaw State's request that he take a year off to get his personal life situated. Sheldon was forced to watch Kennesaw State win the national championship that year. It was tough, you know, no, just knowing that, you know, I could have been a part of it. You know, but at the same time, you know, that year that I set out, I had gotten enough opportunity to spend time with my kids. We bonded so much that, you know, after that, I, I, didn't, I didn't regret it at all, not going. I still have an opportunity to win a championship, you know, but I, I don't have another opportunity to bond with my kids at that age. After winning the championship, Kennesaw would take back their offer as they decided to go in another direction. Sheldon was left looking for somewhere to play, and the answer came from Scott McMillan, who knew of Sheldon from coaching against him. That was my first experience uh, with Sheldon, was when I was head coach of Santa Fe, and he was a, a player at St. John's uh, Community College, and, and they were in our same conference. I was obviously very impressed with him. Had a lot of talent, had a lot of ability. After recently being hired as Lynn University's new head basketball coach, Scott McMillan contacted Sheldon. And I had an opportunity to, 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 uh, to bring him here to Lynn and, and uh, you know, obviously jumped at the chance right away. He was recently married to his second wife, Natasha, and resided in West Palm Beach with his three kids. There was uh, quite a bit of risk involved in, 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 in signing Sheldon to a scholarship because you I, I just didn't know whether he was going to be able to do it uh, with all the commitments he had outside of basketball and outside of school. You know? We felt that he was mature enough, responsible enough that he'd be able to handle everything. I was like, yeah, this is, this is definitely where I want to go. Lynn University is located in Boca Raton, Florida, home of the Fighting Knights and a member of the Sunshine State Conference. Lynn Athletics is known for their success. With a year under Scott McMillan's belt, the men's basketball program was on the rise. Returning that year would be four prominent seniors, two red shirts, and six new recruits. Playing time would be scarce. However, Sheldon was ready for the challenge. I knew he was going to be a good addition to our team right away because he's going to be mature. He's going to bring some maturity to the team. We actually played in the league together in Miami, and um, I knew then that he was going to be a, a pretty good asset to the team. However, preseason would test Sheldon's character and strength. Well, Sheldon's the kind of guy, he always looks like he's in shape. So uh, we soon found out when he got on campus, though, that he needed some work. There's times in the preseason, you know, we were going every day very hard in the morning, in the afternoon, and even study tables at night. He would stay here on campus once in a while, like if he could make it home, and he would stay in JT's room. You know, I would stay because we'd have to get up, you know, and be on the track by 5.30 the next morning. You know, it was, it, was a big, it was a big shock to me because I hadn't gone through anything like that. But I think I, I, you know, I had it pretty well. Despite making it through the grueling preseason workout, Sheldon's lack of basketball knowledge and experience became a major setback once practice began. I think the biggest thing for Sheldon is that, and people forget this, is that he only played in high school, I think, one year. And then two years of junior college basketball. And Sheldon still, to this day, very much, you know, needs to learn a lot more about the game of basketball. And I think you know, having really never been coached, with the exception of his two years in junior college and his one year in high school, he didn't really understand, first off, how to play the game um, in an organized setting, in a team setting, and, and the other thing he had to learn was how to consistently play hard and at a, at a, at a level that he had never played at before. He admitted that, uh, you know, one thing that he, he had a hard time with was catching on to all the coaching terminology you know, and all the different things that usually a lot of players, particularly returners, they've heard certain terms and they know exactly what you mean. Or if you tell them uh, how to do things, you only have to tell them once and they catch on and they remember it, where, you know, some of this stuff was brand new.